Hoi. Hi. Hi. Hey, so you probably have one of these at home. This is a mirror. No <laughs> The cool thing about a mirror is that whatever way you turn it, it changes what you see. Which also means that when it comes down to photography, it gives you endless possibilities for your photos. So that's exactly what we're gonna be doing today. I'm gonna bring you along during a portrait photo shoot and I'm gonna show you how to get very interesting and diverse shots using one mirror. Okay, hold up. Before we continue with this video, what is that on my eye? So I'm currently editing it and it's annoying me so much. Just see it as an extra touch to this video. Embrace it, cause it's gonna be there for the upcoming, what, like six minutes? So enjoy it. Also, if you don't have a mirror at home, I got my mirror at a thrift shop. It was literally $3 super cheap and it doesn't have like a frame around it it's very handy for a photo shoot so i can definitely recommend if you don't have a good mirror go to a thrift store and i'm sure you'll find one so for my photo shoot i used a photo studio but trust me that is not necessary to create these photos because you can easily create them at home as well but i feel like sometimes it's nice to treat yourself rent a studio because it changes the scenery as well and it's just so much fun because it's so wide and open and white and the daylight's gorgeous i was like this gives me a reason to rent a studio, so why not? Let's get into the photo shoot. So I started off with some shots with our model laying on the ground. And I feel like this is such a great way to integrate a mirror in your photo shoots because the model can just change in so many different positions. On another note, sometimes it really helps to show what sort of poses you have in mind. You can explain them and you can be like, maybe put your left hand on your chin and then the right leg up in the air and then bend your back. But sometimes it's just so much easier just to do it yourself, show how you would do the pose and then the model can copy it. I think it would be very cool if you sort of like lay in the sunlight because it will reflect in your face in your face <laughs> i think that would be very cool And we got lucky because the sun was shining so beautifully into the studio. So since we're using a mirror, which is actually an extra reflector as well, that just gave that little twinkle in her eyes. Yes, I'm a big fan. As you can see in my photos, the mirror is not very prominent in the frame, but it still adds that extra touch in the photo. But I think that's pretty cool because it makes people wonder and look at your work a little bit longer as well. Okay, wait. I am going too fast. I need to tell you something and that is what gear I used for this photo shoot. So I was shooting on my Canon R6 as per usual. It's my go-to and then I was shooting with the Canon 85mm f2.0. Alright so we just got some shots on the floor but now I really want to get some shots with the mirror beside Fleur. So I made this little setup. Um, I hope it's gonna work out. And then I also thought it would be cool to add a little bit of color into her photos. So I used my Loom Cube tube light with just a tiny red glow. And to be honest, in most of my photos, or at least in most of my portrait shoots, I just go for that red glow. I love it. It just adds a little bit of extra thing to the photos. So I changed my shots between portrait shots and also some landscapes. And I feel like the landscapes turned out very, very well. I'm super happy with those. Also, if you're sticking around till the end of this video, I have a little present for you. So stay tuned for that. All right, next up, a really cool and funky way to use a mirror. I asked Fleur to sit on the ground and I gave her the mirror and I'm sort of like curling herself around the mirror. It looks really interesting because of course half of her body disappears behind it as well. And then I was like, I'm sort of missing something with this shot. It's still quite boring. So I decided to add some text on it as if we wrote with a mark or something on it, which you can obviously also do. What I did is I went into Photoshop, started typing some letters. So, so I was like, let's type in whatever you want it to be. I chose a nice font, 
just did some minor changes in like the letter spacing and the line spacing or whatever and then to make it look like it's really written on there so I went into drop shadow and then I added a little drop shadow behind the letters a trick with this is see where the Sun is coming from and then add the shadow at the spot where naturally the shadow would be and then to make it all a little bit more natural I added a little bit of Gaussian blur and a little bit of motion blur as well and then change the aperture sorry the aperture <laughs> and then change the opacity just a little tiny bit lower so yeah that's it super simple but i feel like this is one of my favorite shots because it's so enticing you're like what's happening in that shot there's so much going on so i have an idea and i haven't actually tried this before do you know when you're in your living room and the sun is coming through your blinds and you get this nice sun stripe effect on the wall or wherever that's what we're gonna fake today with tape and a mirror or at least I hope. I haven't actually tried this before, but fingers crossed it's gonna work. The whole idea behind this is, is that you put stripes on the mirror and then reflect the sun on the mirror. You know, we'll just give it a try and then you'll see what I mean. To be honest, I think it would be way cooler if the mirror was super big because then you get this like super big blinds effect and now it was just this tiny little thing on the wall but we still made it work because I'm pretty happy with the shots we got with this trick. And then the cool thing as well is that you can switch between making the strips of duct tape very big or small because that also changes the pattern you get on the wall or on your model. I can recommend doing this as the last thing during your photo shoot. If you want to continue shooting after this, it's just really not going to look that pretty because it's going to have sticky stuff all over the mirror. And those are already the different ways on how I would use a mirror on a photo shoot. Super simple and there are honestly so many more ways to use a mirror But these were just some I love to use and I'm so happy with how the photos turned out They're very diverse from each other and it's something I love when I'm creating for example an Instagram carousel I like to make them all diverse as possible So it makes a nice and complete set and then the last thing because then I've already talked so much Is that I have a little present for you on all of these photos, there's obviously an edit and you can download this preset in my description. So have a play around with that. Let me know how you find it. If you're enjoying the preset, it's one of my go-to presets. So I thought it'd be fun to share this one with you. I think that's it. I think I went through all of my points of what I wanted to say. That's actually always what I do during my videos. I write down what I want to say. So that way I make sure I tell you all my secrets and all the things I want to share with you. So yeah, I really hope you enjoyed watching this video and I also hope to see you in my next one. Okay, bye-bye. Doei! Oh yeah, something pretty funny. So when I was younger, I used to make sort of little fake YouTube videos. I'd film myself reviewing candy or reviewing whatever beauty products or something. And then I would send it to my friends. So yesterday, one of my friends sent me one of those videos and it's pretty funny. I'll just show you. But one thing I want to tell you before you're watching it, you know how I always end my videos with saying, doi, doi. That's exactly what I did in that video. So funny, I'll just show you. <laughs> En het is leuk. Let op hè. Doei. Doei.